Hello, I'm David from the Three Orcs channel. Today I'm going to create a wizard with Dale in the Castle Soon Crusade rule set in Fantasy Grounds. So right now you're going to see my screen here and Dale's in the top right hand corner. Say hello Dale. You don't have your push to talk going. Push to talk. There you are. Okay. <laughs> All right, so thank you for helping me again. You helped me with the fighter class, and now we're going to do the wizard. We had some requests in my last video to um, add spells to the combat tab uh, because the this version of Castles for Crusades and Fantasy Grounds doesn't support that like 5e does. Um, I did talk to the Troll Lord, Troll Lord guys, and they did say that it is scheduled this year for them to come out with an update to add things functionality like that to the game but until then we have to do it this way and so let me go ahead and show you how to make a wizard so Dale let's go ahead and zip through this because I know you already know how to play this game so we can go through this pretty quickly and also anybody watching this I already I would expect that you already know how to use fantasy grounds playing and creating a character in fantasy grounds is a little bit different from 5e rule set so that's one of the reasons why I'm making this video to help you figure that out so go ahead, Dale. Um, you're in the character selection screen, and you're going to go ahead and uh, add, a, add an item. There you go. You created a character. I see that. So I'm going to open up your character and follow along. So your name is Varric the Untamed. Perfect. And in race, you have to type in human. That's not drag and drop. And in class, type in wizard. That's not drag and drop. We're going to go ahead and make a third level wizard. Let's do that. Level three. Because I want to show some, I want to show a few second level spells too. Um, then a player name, um, experience points for wizards. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the wizard classes uh, menu here and go down to wizard. And we're gonna keep the wizard open to be used for later. There we go. So a third level wizard requires. Uh, 5,200 experience points. So go ahead and on the left side, type in 5,201 experience points. And then on the right side, type in 10,401. Close enough. <laughs> That's a lot. Yes, it is. Okay, now let's go ahead and roll your stats. So go ahead and roll six sets of four die six and pick the best three how I run my game. Good roll so far. It's not so good. So as we all know, as a human, you get three primes. So three of these that you roll will be a prime. Uh, humans do not... Very nice. That's a 17. And a, another 17? Wow. 16. 16, yeah. Still, that's really good. Okay, very good, Dale. I see you got your stats all laid out now. So at this point, you do have to pick your three primes. So all, to do that in this character sheet, you just have to left click on the name of the, of the attribute and it'll turn that attribute red. Uh, for those that don't know, if you click it again, it'll turn blue and that acts as a secondary. That's if you're using those um, optional rules. But then you can just cycle through it to get it back to red again. Okay, now, now you're going to have to roll for hit points. So a wizard, as you can see from your wizard uh, article, that you, you die for for hit points. And you have a constitution with plus one ability bonus. So go ahead and roll a die four and add one to that. Excellent. So you have four hit points. Um, 
So normally the three fields below, special defenses, special movements, and senses, I use that for notes for demi-humans. Like dwarves and gnomes and halflings have these special abilities and sometimes you want to keep track of that. You don't, don't forget you have those abilities and I usually have players add them as notes in the front page even though they are in the abilities tab. But it's hard to remember what's in your abilities tab sometimes. So since you're human, there's nothing you really need to write here. So from here, the next thing you need to do is go to the Abilities tab. So go ahead and open up the Abilities tab. On the Abilities tab, you're going to drag Wizard and Human over. So you're going to open up the Wizard article, the Human article, and the top left-hand corner icon, you're going to drag it to the Abilities tab and let go. And it's going to auto-populate. There you go. So a primary attributes is a description of humankind that is said, it states that you have three primes. That's all that's for. So there's your bonus spells. So bonus spells, you're going to get an extra first level spell and you're going to get an extra second level spell if you have a 16 or higher intelligence. So you do, so good. Okay, so next tab. The next tab will be your inventory tab. So in the inventory tab, what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up items, the items menu on the right. And normally when you create a character, you have to put some thought into this, but we're gonna go ahead and add a bunch of stuff anyway, uh, just, just to show the different choices that a, a wizard can have. So first, we'll, st we'll stick with adventuring gear. Um, go ahead and just for now, add a cloak, uh, add a robe. So if you you can type that in the search field, robe, or just search it manually. But you want to go ahead and drag a robe over to your character. Oops. Okay, I have a rope now. It has a two EV. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, it automatically, automatically calculates your EV. And, and then it'll tell you whether or not you're burdened. Before we go any further, can you uh, populate your treasure field? Bottom right hand corner, start with P, capital letters PP, GP, SP, CP. There you go. Um, I, this assumes you already have the player's handbook loaded already. Your dungeon master should have shared it with you. And then in the quick reference guide for the player's handbook, there's a section called starting gold. And starting gold for a wizard is one die 10 times 10. So go ahead and roll 10 set of die. We'll times that by 10. And that's how much gold you're going to start the game with. 40 gold. So you, you, if this is if this is a starter first level character, you would have forty gold right now. So go ahead and p type in forty gold in the forty gold in the gold field. And um, if you can, you can scroll through the weapons that's available. But let's go ahead and assign yourself what a wizard would normally have. So if we look at the wizard article on my screen here, at the very top, it says. Um, that you can have a club, dagger, dart, and staff. So let's go ahead and add that. Look for a club, a dagger, a dart, and a staff, and just add them to your inventory. Perfect. So normally when you create a character, you will have to go into a lot of detail like buy backpacks and belt pouches. Um, we'll skip that for now. Um, and breeches and tunic and shoes, I usually let the players equip that for free without encumbrance. Um, so on the right side, there's equipped. There's a little icon on the right of each line item. And right now they're all set for equipped. So if you take your staff at the bottom and you click on it, so it's now unequipped, go ahead and click on that little icon on the right hand side for staff. So right now it's not carried. Your encumbrance just went up. So I always let p uh, players have a, a, a breeches and a tunic and maybe a pair of shoes or or like something like that, or a hat for free. That doesn't include. That doesn't add up. Add their encumbrance. That's just me as a DM being nice to the players because you could quickly run out of a coverage rating if you don't let the players have something. And usually when you go into a doctor's office, don't they make you wear your clothes and shoes when you hop up on the scale? That's how I look at it. 
so now we're going to go ahead and add a spell book. Um, let's see if I can't find you one here. Here we go. Here's a blank spell book for you. I, there's no spell books in the game. They're not predefined. So you have to create it yourself from scratch. And I did create one. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it into your inventory for you and I'll let you look at it. So then I'll go ahead and open it up on my screen so the viewers can see it too. So what I created was a venturing gear, spell book, spell book, wizard spell book, value. This is out of the CK guide. The weight and encumbrance I made up myself. You can adjust that all you want. I figured that was reasonable. And then, um, then, then if you unlock the item, you can actually drag and drop spells into this. So that way you can actually have a real item in your inventory that does list all your spells in your spell book. So if you ever lose a spell book during play, you legitimately lose all your spells and your spell book, your physical spell book is gone if something happens to you. And then at the bottom, I added, um, and at the bottom, I added some CK guide rules about spell books as a note so um, that, that's helpful so that's nice to have and as you can see it has a huge EV so right now you're at the limit if I would uh, next if I, if I was making this character I'd buy a, ba a backpack and start putting this stuff in the backpack so it doesn't count against you okay let me add a little thing um, some advice to the spell book I, I, as you see, I created my own custom spellbook for the player. And in that spellbook, list all the spells that's in that spellbook. And it's all clickable so you can see those spells in, this, in, the, in the guide. But there's more to it than that. It's great that the player has that object in their inventory. And, and if they do somehow lose it, then you can remove it. But there's more to it than that, which is much more valuable. And what's great is, is if the bad guys have spellbooks, think about that. All the spell books that the players loot in the dungeon, they can physically actually loot that object and put it in their inventory and open it up, looking at that spell book and see all the spells that are available in that book. Also, as you know, each item in the game can be uh, identified or not. So if it's titled spell book or arcane book or any kind of description you give it and keep it unidentified, um, and then they're going to not know what's in that book. So if they cast like read magic or they study it or somehow or another, they figure out what's in the book, then you can click identify function on that spell book. And then all of a sudden they'll see the full description of that spell book, including all the spells listed there. So it's a great way to get spells to the party in the game by looting it from other players, um, monsters, NPCs. There you go. So the next step that we need to look at besides equipment is the combat tab. So go ahead and click on the combat tab. We're gonna review regular um, normal weapons first before we talk about spells. So right now, um, when, you, when you add a weapon to your inventory, it automatically populates the combat tab. And as you can see, there's two versions of the club because you can throw a, you can throw a club. And there's a melee version of the club and a thrown version of the club. And it automatically calculates your dexterity bonus as well to hit. And it automatically calculates uh, plus one to the damage. Because your strength... Hmm. I don't know why you get plus one to damage. Let's find out. You know why I think you do? Because clubs do one die six plus one damage normally. Naturally, they do one die six plus one. That's why it said plus one to damage in that field. I see it right here. If you click on the magnifying glass, it shows the details of the properties of attack and damage. Um, so the, the club looks great. Um, under the club thrown version, type in one for ammo. Go ahead and type a one in the ammo field. So now you have a check mark. So if you ever do throw it, you click that check mark, and then it'll show that you've used it. Uh, darts. Uh, right now you have one dart um, that has ammo field too. So type a one in there, and darts are thrown. So you get plus two to attack, and darts do die three damage. See that? That's really interesting. Uh, there is no three-sided die graphic for the combat tab. So if a weapon, and we'll look at the dart. Um, we'll look at the dart item. The dart item shows that it does one to three points of damage, one die three. But there is no three-sided die graphic, so it uses a six. It makes a roll of one die three to do the damage. 
So this looks all good. This is normal. Um, it, it functions as it should. Can you click on the mini tab in the top left hand corner of the weapons chart? Um, as you can see, only the club is showing because if you look at the left on the line item for each weapon, on the left side there's a little icon that says equipped or unequipped or not carried. So it has to be equipped to show up in this weapons submenu. And I'm going to keep that open on my screen for um, us to refer to later. So I, I don't know if anybody's seen my other video about um, how to make role playing. Uh, playing the game in Fantasy Grounds easier, though this is one of the steps that I outlined in that video. Um, as you can see that the mini menu is much cleaner and easier to look at and use compared to the combat tab in this player sheet, which has so much stuff going on. Okay, so what everybody's been waiting for, let's do spells. So in the spells tab, um, if we look at the wizard and scroll to the bottom, the chart here, it says here at third level, you're going to get four zero level cantrip spells, three first level, and one second level. But because you have an intelligence bonus, um, you're going to get an extra second and first level spell. That's how many spells you can memorize to cast in a day between rest periods. So go ahead at the top of your screen under zero, level zeros, in that field, type in four. Type in number four there. Okay, under level one field, type in uh, type in four because of your intelligent bonus. And then level two, you're going to type in two. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to pick out your spells. Um, your third level, so you probably have a few more spells than this. So go ahead and open up spells. And... We'll go ahead and filter for cantrips here. So I got spells open and we're gonna filter the cantrips. So now we're only looking at the zero, the zero level wizard spells in the spells menu. So go ahead and drag um, six of those up and drop them in the level zero row. The row that, we'll just assume you're level three and you found some more during your adventures. Maybe another wizard taught you a few. <laughs> there you go. It's pretty cool. Okay, so now we're going to do level one spells. Um, you're going to have, I suppose, five, five first level spells. So um, I, wanna, I want you to grab ones that I have some programming for because we're going to go ahead and program those for the combat tab. So let me uh, get those ready here. The Burning Hands. Uh, charm. Magic Missile. Per yeah. It's down at the bottom. And uh, protects him from alignment. Is that a spell? Yeah, alignment. Um, then let's do shocking grasp. Yeah, I want to show all these examples. And then sleep. Okay, now let's pick out a couple of second level spells so we can program those as well. Let's just do acid arrow. Um, and then you can pick out some others if you like. I think I can program Ray of Enfeeblement, um, make their, uh, their strength go down. But these others aren't really programmable. Web is, actually. Web would be an effect. So we got the spells. Now, um, as, as you know from playing the game, that this tab at the very bottom left-hand corner is three different modes. You're in standard mode right now. So go ahead and change that to preparation mode. And in preparation mode, um, it says at the top, prepared zero of four for zero level spells. So you're gonna click on four of these to prepare for that day's adventure. 
There it goes. One, two, three, and four. Okay, now let's go down the first level spells. Prepared, zero of four. So prepare four of those. Okay, so now second level spells. Prepare two of those. Um, acid arrow and another one. Yeah, because I know how to program that. Okay, so now change it from preparation mode to um, combat mode. Perfect. Now click on the mini menu. The mini menu. These uh, f these uh, mini menus are expandable in case you can't see everything, including the weapons chart. But yeah, we can see everything there. Okay. Perfect. See how clean it looks now where you can actually play the game with casting spells. So when you cast a spell, all you have to do is left click on these little tiny check marks on the left side of the, of the spell and that spell will disappear from this menu because you've casted it and you're not going to be able to cast it again. And I see you just cast a de detect magic. Detect magic is now missing from the spell list because, because you casted it. But if you look over in um, your spell tab on your character sheet, you still, it's still there. It's just not showed up on the mini menu. Okay, so that's the basics of spells. Now we need to automate some of them. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back to the combat tab. This is where it gets a little bit interesting. So there's really no zero level spells to automate, except for maybe light. Okay, so this is the difficult part. This is the part that everybody's been waiting for. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna do an easy one first. A first level spell called magic missile so what you're gonna do is you're gonna create you're gonna create a weapon so in the combat tab you're gonna go ahead and uh, edit the list and you're gonna I'm gonna create this for you so you can see what I'm doing so add item and I'm gonna type in um, you can say anything you want here spell magic missile you can you can type it any way you want make it look like any way you want this is just a title um, and this title will be reflected in the um, chat box. So I like to make it look like that. That's good for me. So it's it's a ranged weapon. So we're going to change it from melee to ranged. And oh, we need to open up uh, magic missile here so we can see what the stats are. So magic missile, magic missile range is 150 feet. So we're going to type in 150. Ammo will be one because it's one spell. There is, you don't have to worry about the to, the to hit part because you know as it's an automatic hit, so you're not going to be rolling to hit. You'll be skipping that part when you use this. But what you're going to do is um, we're going to hit the magnifying glass to open that up, and we're going to add the damage. So the damage of uh, is one die four plus one damage for a magic missile. I'm going to drag a four sided die into the damage field, and then I'm going to add plus one to the damage field. And so now I'll close. I'll I'll press the magnifying glass to close that up. So go ahead and do damage with that magic missile line item in the chat window and watch what happens. See? <laughs> Two points of damage. Yeah, it's great. So that's how you do magic missile. It's pretty straightforward for that. Also, if you look under the weapons... Oh, so as you can see, under the weapons mini menu, it's not showing up. So on the left side of the screen, on the combat tab, you have to equip it. Right now it's carried. So change that to equipped. There you go. Now it's, yeah, easily accessible and usable in combat. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is burning hands. So I'll let you do this one. Go ahead and create another line item. In, there you go and type in any kind of format you like spell burning hands that's fine and it's going to change that from melee to ranged okay where's burning hands at we are creating the spell burning hands and it's going to do one die two damage plus one per level so i'm going to go ahead and pick up the six out of die I'm going to right click on the six out of die and I'm going to choose custom dice and then I'm going to choose die two. So now I have a die two and in burning hands, I'll put that in the damage field and then I'll add a one here for the plus one per level. There you go. You did three, three points, 
three points of damage. So burning hands, you don't roll to hit. Um, you just uh, do the damage. And to, for that to work, though, you have to have targeted all the creatures that just the spell would affect. You have to pre-target all the creatures first on the combat map before you do the damage. So it does damage to all of them. Or if you wanted to instead, you can just roll this over and over again on each, on each target separately all at once. It's up to you. Shocking Grasp, same thing. So go ahead and create a new line item and call it Spell Shocking Grasp. So this one's gonna be a little different. So it's not melee. Well, it is melee. Oh, I'm sorry, it is melee. So keep it melee, but you're gonna have to add something here. You're gonna have to add the word touch. So after the word Shocking Grasp, there's gonna be a space, then the word in lowercase, touch. That word tells Fantasy Grounds programming that this is a, a touch attack. So it'll know that it needs to hit armor class 10, plus dexterity. We made a few mistakes already. We, we, forgot, we forgot that you're third level. So some of these damages are not right. We didn't, we didn't calculate that you're third level. <laughs> so we're gonna have to change the damage for burning hands. Yeah, burning hands will have to be adjusted. And I think magic missile as well. In shocking grass, um, a third level caster damage is one die eight plus three damage. So in the damage field, you're gonna, you're gonna drag the die eight Eight sided die into the damage field, and then you're going to type a three in the um, damage modifier window. So let's go ahead and make sure I can see what you're doing there. And you did it. Die. That's an eight sided, and that's plus three. So the damage is set, and it's touch attack. That's set. Um, also, let's see what else the spell says in case we're missing something. Savings throw none. So we don't have to worry about any savings throws. All you have to do is roll to hit a touch attack, and then if you do hit, that damage happens. So it's ready to go on your weapons tab. It's not. You have to add it. There you go. It's on there now. It's right here on the list, in the list. So let's go ahead and adjust Burning Hands. Burning Hands is plus one hit points per level of the caster. So you're going to have to adjust the damage for Burning Hands to a plus three. Go ahead and check. There you go. So that's fixed. Uh, magic missile, we need to double check that. I think you get an extra missile. Every two levels, past the first level, you get an additional missile. So what I would do, yes, but so to, to do that, I would simply just increase the ammo. So give yourself two ammo. There you go, you have two amp. Got it. Okay, so those spells are fixed. Um, looking at the other spells here, now we have spell effects. Those were damage spells, and that's how you do it. Um, you can do this one with any spell in the game, unless it, it calls for a savings throw. So if a spell calls for a savings throw, you need to write that in the description of the spell itself. That like SV for save, and then like strength or something, STR or whatever the save is. Uh, that way, it'll it'll notify the DM and yourself that there's a save required. It's not automated. That save has to be done manually. So it's just like a little. It's like a note to remind you a save is required. That's how you. So it's not quite fully automated, but at least the damage will be. Um, once you determine if the save is made or not. So some, um, like Fireball, if you do make a save, it's half damage. And um, you'd have to figure out how to automate that. You'd probably want to do a second line item for that, for the half damage instead of the full damage, or you can just modify the line item as you go. We're trying to automate this, and so when you, when you cast a spell and do the damage, that damage is automatically gonna be coming off the monster, the mob, the NPC. True, you can do that manually as well. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about different kind of spells. So the rest of them are spell effects. You have to handle that completely different. They're not gonna be in your weapons list or your weapons tab. So we're gonna have to go back to the spells tab and we're gonna have to open up uh, um, the effects tab. So the, the effects is a menu in the top right hand corner of your screen and you always apply effects 
to, um, for conditions of what what occurs in combat, like if somebody is blinded, or the creature's dazed, or they're deafened, or they're defenseless, or invisible. You apply this f- effect to a character. Um, so what we're going to do now is, you don't have a token yet, so I'm not sure if I can do that for you, but we're going to try that real, real quick. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the combat tracker. Um, you don't have a token yet, so that's why you don't have a picture of your character. But in the combat tracker, you're the only one listed there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put up a monster in there, like a knoll. So let me go ahead and pull up knolls. Okay, so I added a bunch of knolls to the combat tracker. Um, Dale, you're not going to be able to see them because they're invisible. So I'm going to go ahead and show them right now. Now they're visible to all players. Yeah, I got, I got three for you to play with. Um, and I'll go ahead and make them identify too, so you can, so you can identify their numbers. Um, so when you cast a spell on one of them, let's go ahead and roll initiative, so that way everybody has an initiative going on, so that that's not a problem in our example here. So go ahead and roll initiative for your character. There you go. Um, I, I go ahead and toggled it that you're, you're, it's your initiative right now. I'll just leave it at your initiative so you can play with your spells. So effects. Now, we, I'll give you an example of some of these spells here. I, cr- I created a whole bunch of effects, and I, put, I posted them on the, the Castles and Crusades forums online. Um, it's a list of all the ones I've created so far, all the first and second level spells. And I've actually created them already here in my game, as you can see in the fix, the effect, the effects custom list here. Um, can can you see them, Dale? Can you see the ones I've created? Oh, good. So, yes, I title them spell first, so that way when you use them um, on, on this effect on a creature, you'll know it's a spell effect. That's why I titled it that way, and then in. And then asterisk, I titled, titled the name of the spell. So these are all programmable effects that uh, Fantasy Grounds recognizes, like ATK1 means plus one to hit. Um, DMG1 means plus one to damage. Things like that. So some of these effects, so these effects you apply to a creature. So you're going to have to role play this, what you're doing. So we'll start with the light spell. Um... The light spell doesn't actually do anything, but you do cast it on an object, and it, ca- and it shows 40 feet. So what I do, but you want to keep track of how long the light spell lasts, which is 60 melee rounds for first level character. You'll have to adjust these durations based on the character level, by the way. These numbers are all based on first level characters. So what I'll do is I'll take this, I'll take the spell light effect and just drag it to your character and watch what happens. So you either can click it once and it affects whoever the target is, or you drag it to a character or an NPC or a monster and drop it onto their character in the combat tracker or on the battle map. And it'll add it to their effects list. So right now you have an effect on you that's on. It shows it's on, it's active, and it's visible. You can you can adjust you can adjust those. And it describes what it what it is, and then it has a duration of 60 melee rounds. And so that way you can keep track of your light spell, even though it doesn't really affect the other creatures or anything. But at least you can count down how long the spell lasts, which is great. Um, I don't know. So I honestly, I don't know um, how useful this spell would be because what combats last 60 rounds. So let's go ahead and delete that one. So on the right hand side, click, click delete item and delete that spell effect. But that light spell is just an example of a utility spell you could keep track of. Okay, so now um, we're going to do another spell effect. So Dancing Lights is a really good example. So can you cast Dancing Lights spell on yourself? Can you add that to your um, character on the combat tracker? We're not using the we're not using the battle map to shave room on the screen, but you could do the same thing that way. You could drag it over to the battle map. So right now you have an effect called Spell Dancing Lights, forty foot of visibility. But those are just notes to help you remember what that effect is. You can type anything you want in your effects. You can abbreviate it better if you wanted to. So, but what's important here is it's not only is the effect on you, but it does have a countdown of six melee rounds. So that's useful for combat. That'd be very useful in combat. Um, now, let's go ahead and um, cast uh, 
the next time I list. We'll just go through my list. Go ahead and have a, let's say a cleric in your group cast aid on you. So go ahead and drag the aid effect on you. Okay, so now you have aid. It's gonna last six media rounds, as you can see, and it's gonna give you plus one to hit whenever you attack. That's what that does, and it's automated, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so next spell. Oh yeah, go ahead. See, there you go. No, no the club already has a plus one for damage. Um, that ATK is plus one to hit. You have to roll an attack. So go ahead and roll an attack on your character sheet. Go to the combat tab, or use the combat submenu, and roll to hit with the club. Do a melee attack to hit with your club. See, you got plus one to hit. Also, also, if you read the line item, it says effects plus one. It doesn't say that where, where the effect came from, but it is an effect that's affecting you that gave you a plus one to hit. So it does say that in the line item to keep track of that stuff. So now let's go ahead and do another one here. I got listed. So let's do um, entangle. I just want to go through my list of what I created already, even though you don't have the spell. We'll just say somebody else in your group cast it on the gnolls. So. Either you have to target the null with left control, left click to target the null from whoever's casting the spell, or you can just simply just drag that spell effect over and drop it on the null. And that's what we're gonna do now. So can you do that? Can you drag and tangle over to one of the nulls? Just There you go. So the null now is entangled with the entangle spell that probably the druid in your group cast that. And they're probably all entangled because they're probably all close together. So you can actually drag that effect to each one of them. And it has a duration of six. So it will count down automatically. And automatically it has an attack of minus two to hit. And there's all dexterity saves are a minus four. And that's all programmed for that effect. So the DM doesn't have to worry about it. It's all automated. Yes, ATK, DMG, SAVE, those are all a fantasy ground program words. Um, there's an article online what those words are. The Castle of Crusades has its own article of what those are. And so I took those articles and I wrote, I created all these spells and spell effects based on that. And that's the article I posted to the forums. Um, you can use what I did as examples of what I've done to help you create more or to adjust them. So let's go ahead and do, um, let's go ahead and cast uh, protection from alignment on yourself. Yeah, I, I labeled it that. That's not the name of the spell, but I did, I labeled it that way because I like that wording better. So there you go. So, so now automatically your armor class is up by two now. Your armor class increased by two because of that command word. And, uh, and you see the duration? It only lasts three media rounds because it's based off a first level person casting it. If, like I said before, you'll have to adjust these based on the level who's casting it. Shield of Faith is the same thing. Shield spell for shield spell doesn't automatically increase your armor class because it's so variable. It's a variable. It's three different ACs creates an effect on you based on the kind of weapon that's attacking you. So a melee weapon is armor class 16. Uh, I believe a uh, thrown weapon is armor class 17. And a bow is armor class 18. There's no way to program that. So that AC 16 through 18 is a note. Maybe if you wanted to reword that to, so you know it's a note, like maybe put it in parentheses or something, that might help. So uh, you'll have to adjust that manually as you play. But at least it counts down the duration of the spell, which is half the battle. You know, it's, it's so hard to keep track of all these spells going off and how long they last for a DM. So it helps a lot. Sleep spell is cool too. Um, depending on what kind of game you run, I don't run, I don't have Cryptic Grace. So when, when, a, when a person, when a creature is magically sleeping, um, there's no chance they're going to wake up. So whoever's going to attack them is going to hit them without missing. That's why I gave it an armor class of negative 20. You can make that anything you want. But there's no way somebody's going to miss with an armor class of negative 20. Um, and then another rule that I use, which is different from most DMs, is I have the characters do max damage. And then, because you remember, as soon as you damage a sleeping cre a person, 
they wake up. So there's a chance that they could throw their arms up, roll to the side, just spaz and freak out and try to avoid any more damage. So as soon as you do the initial damage, which is max damage, and they're still alive, uh, they're still prone, they're probably still helpless, but they're not dead yet, depending on the hippo. That is not a castle and crusade roll. That's optional, and I don't use it in my games. I don't run it in my games. Okay, because if I did, then my monsters would do it against the players. That would be bad. Okay, so uh, spell, silenced, uh, sleep, web. So web's the same thing as um, entangle. It does the same thing. You'll have to apply the web effect to each creature affected by the web. Same thing. It automatically gives them minus two to attack and minus two to damage. But it doesn't automatically adjust their movement, though. You'll have to roleplay that. But at least you'll know how long it lasts. Which is round around, by the way. Because they keep making dex saves and strength saves, whatever that is. Uh, um, and so those are good examples of how to do spells. So the, the way to handle this currently in, the, in this version of CNC is to either create spell effects that you apply to the party members or the NPCs or monsters, or create a weapon line items to use in combat. And that's it. So people say CNC is not automated, but I proved here that it can be automated quite a bit. All you gotta do is put a little bit more effort into it. And it, it makes the game a little better, I believe. This wraps up the video on creating a wizard with Dale. I think we covered almost everything that is required to play the character in the game and maybe some tips on how to be able to play it a little bit better maybe, make it easier to play and so, with some more automation. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to post them down below. If you have any requests for other videos that you'd like to see, uh, go ahead and post that below. I think maybe my next videos might be for a cleric and rogue and maybe a druid. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Thank you.